it looks a little bit intimidating when I see that I need to get the work done by drag because we know that drag is like this very non-simple force um, that could be either proportional to the speed or the square of the speed and we've seen some complicated examples with it. In this case it's just a concept question about how much energy is missing, how much energy was deleted by the drag. So I'm going to try to get a picture being released from 100 meters above the ground. Drag is not negligible but I'm not asking you to use a formula for computing the drag force based on surface area and all that stuff. You'll see how simple it is in a minute. And the mass hits the ground at 38 meters per second. Again, the assumption is that all of these things have been measured to three sig figs, so I can round my answer there. Okay, so I want the work done by gravity, and to get that, I, I need the force of gravity, so I'm going to put that in, and that's mg, and that's 5 times 9.8, and that's 49 newtons, and that force of gravity never changes because we're near the surface of the Earth. Um, if you were to go at, like, one Earth radius above the surface of the Earth, this would change, but these are... This is very close to the surface of the Earth, and this is very close to a constant. So it's 49 newtons the whole way. And my displacement vector, if I'm being really precise about that, I'm just going to turn this into my displacement vector, this vertical yellow line, points straight down. So mg vector is pointing in exactly the same direction as the displacement vector. So in the dot product here, when I, when I get the work, I'm going to use a Y since it's vertical. Um, I have an angle of zero degrees between these two vectors, so the cosine is just one. And I just get the product of the two magnitudes. So I end up with mg Sometimes it's difficult to back up one step. All right, mg times um, maybe what I'll call H, just so I can do it symbolically. And then that's going to be 5 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, 100 meters. Okay, smash all those numbers together, 5 times 9.8 times 100, and I get 4,900 joules. So there's the work done by gravity. I could even put a little subscript of G on the work just to distinguish it from the work done by drag. Um, just a little side note on units here. I have kilogram meters per second squared. If I think about Newton's second law, these are Newtons over here on the left. These are kilograms. These are meters per second squared. All right, so these are newtons over here times meters, and that's what a joule is, a newton meter. So there's the work done by gravity. How about the work done by the drag? Um, so what makes this really just a good concept question is, is I'm testing your conceptualization of, of work and energy. I had gravity pump work into this object, and at the end, the object has some kinetic energy. If I just go ahead and measure that real quick and find out how much kinetic energy there is, if there was no drag, there would be 4,900 joules of it. And what I suspect is we're going to find out some of it is missing, and that's because drag did some work. So 1 half times 5 times 38 squared. That gives me 3,610 joules. And then I go, aha, there's some energy missing here. That must have been um, the energy deleted by this drag force. So the drag force did some negative work to remove energy from the system. And just if I look at a qualitative thing over here, gravity is pointing down, doing positive work for sure because it's pointed in the same direction as the displacement. Drag force, of course, is opposing the direction of motion. So there's my drag force. 
and pointing the opposite direction from the displacement is going to make the, the drag force do negative work. So finally, I have the work, work done by drag. It's, it's got to be negative. So the right way to set up this subtraction is like this. Now, in practice, I would probably just find the difference and then, and then put a minus sign on it. And I get negative 1290. Again, in practice, I would just go, what's the missing energy? So the way I actually typed it into my cal calculator was 4900 minus 3610. And then I said, oh, but it's got to be negative. So that's good enough.